Gentlemen, I think it's uh, I'm up next, and um, I'm going to try to provide the economist perspective and uh, talk a little bit about the value of TV white spaces to users. There we go. Um, so, uh, in providing this perspective, um, first I'm going to um, uh, talk a little bit about the amount of spec uh, white spaces that are out there. Elaborate a little bit on what Peter talked about earlier about the availability. Talk some about the value since I'm an economist, a little bit about the economics of using it. The first point I wanted to make here about existing unlicensed uh, allocations, P Peter talked about some of them, is to say that um, there's quite a few unlicensed bands already out there um, on the one hand. But on the other hand, uh, none of them are like the TV white spaces. Uh, these are all, these major allocations are all higher in frequency, so they have different propagation characteristics. Um, and uh, for the ones that are sort of lower down, like at 900, there's not nearly as much spectrum as available in the white spaces. So the white spaces do become uh, a very unique allocation um, in the frequencies and the quality of the spectrum, plus, uh, as Peter mentioned, the way it's allocated as um, not a national clear band, but the unused parts around TV uh, is a new model for allocating um, spectrum. So at a very high level, um, the, this is less granular than the map that uh, Peter showed earlier. It shows by uh, 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 economic area, the BEA, um, the amount of spectrum that's available. And I have a couple of versions of this. The, the thing to say is that this is a very conservative estimate of the availability of white spaces. It, uh, it locks off all uh, adjacent channel um, uh, protections and leaves a, a uh, much less white space than probably is actually going to be available at the end of the day. But um, just to give you an idea, uh, th this shows it on a megahertz pop basis. So this is averaged across the areas based on the sort of average availability of the amount of total spectrum by population that's available. The, the lightest colored spaces are, you know, under 10 percent. The darkest colored spaces are are up to 90 percent uh, or close to 100. And the thing to take away is the theme that we'll, we'll be returning to is that in rural areas and as you get away from cities, you tend to have quite a bit more um, spectrum available. This is a similar view, and it tells a similar story based on the amount of megahertz on average that are available in each of these areas. Um, again, the lightest ones are under 30 megahertz, and the largest ones are, uh, you know, over two, darkest ones are over 200 megahertz available, which is really quite a lot of spectrum, but again, tends to be more in the rural areas. Uh, to talk a little bit about the value of this spectrum, it's unlicensed, so it's not sold, so it doesn't have a value in a conventional sense, but uh, the spectrum at issue that's being made available for white spaces is a very valuable resource. Um, and uh, I use here to illustrate that value of, uh, the, uh, of the spectrum that's being made available, the value that um, the E block in the 700 megahertz auction sold for. I use the E block as a comparable because it uh, is unpaired and uh, it is TV band spectrum. It's just above in frequency where uh, where the white spaces are. It comes out of the uh, channels 53 to it was in the in the channels in the 50s. Um, and this is just meant to give sort of rough justice to the value numbers. It's not a, a, a specific valuation of any particular frequencies. And just to note that uh, the average price was about 74 cents a megahertz pop. That is covering one person with one megahertz of spectrum sold for about 74 cents. You can see using that valuation for the white spaces uh, creates shows that it's worth almost $14 billion. So it's really quite a lot of value of spectrum if you had to buy it at auction would be a very uh, a very expensive proposition. You'll know that the average value of the white space is a little bit less, and that is reflective, again, of the fact that there's more frequencies available in rural areas, um, which are less expensive. And although it's an average of about 55 cents, there's quite a lot of variation um, in, in the value of spectrum that's being made available here. And this slide gets at that variation in value. The, the lightest colors are um, under 10 cents a megahertz pop. So in rural areas, uh, when spectrum is sold, uh, because there's a lot available and less demand, its price is much lower. Um, and in some areas in this auction, it was uh, pennies a mega, 
megahertz pop. And likewise, you can see, although there's less spectrum available there in the cities and urban, more urbanized areas, the value is much higher. Um, and on this map, the darkest, uh, the darkest colors, greens, are, are up well over a dollar. Um, so to give a little bit of the economist uh, perspective on using uh, radio spectrum, I think the, the, the central observation is spectrum is used as an input into the production of services that are based on spectrum. You, you mix spectrum with capital and labor and, and, and other inputs and provide a service uh, to an end customer. And the a central economic insight, if you remember back to your Econ 1 classes, is that you're going to use any input in production, including radio spectrum, up to the point where the added value of using one more unit of it will just equal the added cost of that additional unit. So you will, um, for, and you can trade that off between the different inputs that you use in the production process. So in the example of a cellular network, for any given increase in capacity that you require, you can either add radio spectrum to it or you can add capital to the network by subdividing your cells and increasing your capacity. Uh, and economically, you want to, um, on the margin, be indifferent between all of those different ways of increasing your capacity or, or equivalently reducing your cost. So to take that insight to the world of white spaces, the good news is that um, unlicensed white spaces is free spectrum. And that means that you're going to use more of it than if you were paying for it. You would be able to use it up to the point where adding more to your network uh, doesn't add any value, doesn't create any additional revenues or, or reduce any costs at all. And if that allows you to use less capital as a trade-off, um, that's, a, that's a significant cost savings for you and, and all the better. The, uh, the one caveat. Um, is, uh, as Peter mentioned, is that in an unlicensed environment, um, you have no, unlike in a licensed environment, you have no protection from interference. So you have to make sure that your business model is one that um, is appropriate for this environment. The bad news for white spaces is also that spectrum is free. Um, and this means that other people in, the, uh, uh, in your neighborhood are also going to be using more of it. Um, uh, up to the point where where no more where they're unable to benefit from using more, um, and uh, and just to keep in mind that when this other service in your area is using spectrum, they're not going to be considering the fact that uh, what they're doing might uh, harm you. So you have to again, I want to emphasize this point. Uh, you have to have a business model that allows you to operate successfully. Um, in an, in, their, in an environment that has uh, the potential for interference. This, uh, what that is will depend, um, will vary by application and by uh, area, but it could be things like uh, if you're delivering information but it's not uh, absolutely time sensitive, you can, uh, you can afford some latency, then an unlicensed environment might be a very cost effective uh, approach. The two things I want to talk about is, is is the, the, the being able to tolerate interference and then also in areas where uh, there's an abundance of white space um, so that you would expect to have to have less interference. Those are sort of the two strategies to be successful in this environment. Uh, so the first one, um, you know, white spaces are just, the rules are, are just coming out. There's plenty there now. But if we look as an analogy to the Wi-Fi band, the 2.4 band, um, this, is, this is not the actual use of the band because there's no good measurement on it. This is a proxy for use, which is the number of devices per year that the FCC authorizes to be used in a band. So uh, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation uh, between devices being put on the market and the amount sold, but at least gives you an idea of the interest in the band. And you can see at the time that Wi-Fi took off in 99, uh, late 90s, uh, the number of devices that were authorized to use that band also took off. And we expect white spaces, unlicensed white spaces, to be similarly successful, um, if not more so. And you should expect a proliferation of other devices in the band and just uh, and that you're going to have to have a business model that um, can accommodate or tolerate them. The other uh, good news that I wanted 
to say about white spaces, the other strategy is to go where there's um, less chance of interference. So in rural areas, as this indicates, um, mu I, this divides the, the country into um, uh, rural MS, uh, RSAs and metropolitan uh, MSAs. And as you can see, most of the population is in the urbanized areas. Um, and most of the, uh, what I call covered population here, this is covered by the uh, TV stations that you could have called, I could have called that the black spaces here. 79% um, of it in, in the MSAs is covered, which leaves 21% for white space. Uh, but in rural areas, uh, it's over 50% um, or about 50% of the spectrum is available. And as you can see, that averages out to almost 150 megahertz um, per, uh, in, any, in any given area. And when there's that kind of an abundance of radio spectrum in an area, especially a rural area that's probably going to have less demand than other areas, um, then the concerns about interference are probably greatly reduced because there's enough spectrum 